Heat pumps are starting to catch a lot more attention for heating and cooling your home now than they have in the past. And the same is true for other uses, but this one really surprised me. What about putting a heat pump in your dryer? Now there's some insanely cool, or should I say hot, engineering inside this dryer that doesn't require a vent to the outside or a high voltage outlet. This thing runs off of a standard 15 amp household outlet and will use four to five times less electricity than a typical electric dryer. So if they're that good, why aren't they used everywhere? Well, I've been living with this Mila model for a while now and I have some thoughts on that. It's one of my favorite pieces of new tech in my home and it's kind of genius, but not perfect. How does this thing work and are heat pump dryers even worth it? I'm Matt Farrell, welcome to Undecided. This video is brought to you by Incogni, but more on that later. I'm sure some of you probably think I'm a bit of a heat pump fanboy, but the technology really is incredible. It's the most efficient way to generate heat. Well, not really generate it, but to move it, which is why it's so energy efficient. Now, I won't go into all the details of how heat pumps work, but at a high level, they capture heat from the environment and use a compressor to amplify that heat and put it where you want it. A big knock against heat pumps for heating and cooling your home is that they may be slow to respond, meaning it might take longer to heat or cool than other systems. Another is that they might not be able to get as hot as you need it in super cold environments. And while there's a seed of truth to both of those complaints, it's not that simple. And I've addressed those in other videos. And when it comes to heat pump dryers like the Mila TXI 680WP, a name that rolls right off the tongue, you might hear similar concerns. For full transparency, I have no association with Mila and paid for this with my own money. Now, common complaints you might hear are that it doesn't get as hot as a typical dryer or that the clothes aren't completely dry at the end of a cycle. And on both of those, it's somewhat true, but in practice, I don't think it matters. And I'll get to why in just a minute. Now, first, the way heat pump dryers work is kind of ingenious. It's essentially a closed loop system made up of two circuits. And one of those circuits is the air circuit that helps to dry the clothes. The second circuit is the coolant circuit that extracts the heat and moisture from the processed air. Now, as I mentioned before, a heat pump uses a compressor to generate heat. And when you compress something like a fluid that's running through a heat pump system, that fluid is heated up. If you run that heated fluid through a radiator with cooler air passing through it, you'll heat the air. That's the first step of this heat pump dryer. And this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but that hot air helps to evaporate and remove the moisture from clothes that you're trying to dry. Now, in a typical dryer, this hot, moist air is what's vented to the outside of the house. You need to keep pumping in hot, dry air to fully dry the clothes. This creates a bit of a problem though, because as you're ejecting that hot, moist air from the house, it has to be made up from somewhere else. And that's made up by cooler outside air seeping into the house to make up for that exhausted air. Otherwise, the dryer would be trying to pull a vacuum and your house probably does not seal well enough for that. And ultimately, the dryer is not only drying your clothes, but costing you more money by forcing your HVAC system to work in overdrive to recondition the house from that energy loss. It's a one-two punch of, why are we doing it this way? <laughs> well, a heat pump dryer like this Mila does not eject that hot, moist air. Instead, it recirculates it through the second coolant circuit that I mentioned earlier. As you heat the hot air flowing into the drum, you're helping to cool down that fluid that was passing through the radiator. This cooled down fluid is then used by another radiator to cool down that hot, moist air that's exhausted from the drum. This is basically like a air conditioner at this stage. When you cool hot, moist air, you end up getting condensation, which is then collected in a water reservoir. You can also opt to run the condensation hose to a sink or a drain so you don't have to empty the reservoir every couple of loads. But from our experience, emptying it really is easy and not too annoying. And you could also reuse that water for other uses like watering plants. In my case though, I ran the hose to a nearby drain for our setup. That cooled fluid flows back through the compressor, is reheated and sent back to that first radiator. Then that cooled and dried air flows through the first radiator and is heated back up, completing the whole circuit. It's such a clever system that's constantly recapturing and reusing the heat. So clever that if you compare the Energy Star ratings of this Mila model and a popular electric dryer from let's say Samsung, you'll see that the Samsung is estimated to use 608 kilowatt hours of electricity per year. Now the Mila is estimated to use 133 kilowatt hours per year. Now where I live, electricity prices are roughly 30 cents per kilowatt hour right now. That means the Mila will cost about $142.50 less to run each year. That's 182 versus 40 bucks a year in theory. Now the theory of this tech is really clever and cool or hot, but how does it hold up? What's the user experience actually like? And my wife and I have been living with this thing for the past couple of months and it's taken some getting used to. It's not all sunshine and rainbows, but don't take that as a negative review. 
There's two main things that can be viewed as negatives, and one of them takes getting used to, but the other might be a barrier that stops you in your tracks for some of you. And one thing that shouldn't be a barrier for you today is today's sponsor, Incogni. I've mentioned this before, but I signed up for a newsletter from a small online retailer, and after I did, I saw a major increase in the number of promotional emails that I was receiving from companies I've never heard of. And that happened because the company sold my information to a data broker. And I'm sure you've experienced this too. Incogni can help you with this. We have the right to request that data brokers delete our information, but it takes a lot of time and effort. I signed up for Incogni, gave them the legal right to work on my behalf, and then just sat back and relaxed. You'll see updates in your account for which data brokers they've sent legal requests to and which ones have complied. Couldn't be easier. I've been letting Incogni stay on top of this for me for a very long time now, and I'm really happy with the results. And I've noticed a big difference. If you want to take back some of the control around who has access to your personal information, give Incogni a try. The first 100 people to use the code UNDECIDED at the link below will get 60% off Incogni. Thanks to Incogni and to all of you for supporting the channel. So back to those two negatives. Now the first thing is that when you dry a full load on the normal cycle of the dryer, the clothes often don't feel fully dry when you take them out. Now this was something that really set my wife and I off at first. We would run loads through two dryer cycles to get them feeling what we were used to from other machines that we've used in the past. We also tried running every load through the max settings, which increases the drying time and temperature and also lowers the efficiency, but that didn't make a big difference at all. Now, this may sound pretty damning, but this is when my wife had an epiphany about a month ago. After a single cycle at the normal setting, she took the clothes out of the dryer even though they didn't feel fully ready. She gave them a few shakes in the air and like magic, they suddenly felt dry. That's when we realized what was happening. The moisture level inside the drum is higher than what you'd normally experience with a vented dryer. Because of that, the clothes need to just air out for a minute or two outside the machine to release that last bit of moisture and humidity as the clothes cool off. Since that epiphany, we've recalibrated what we expect the clothes to feel like when finished. We now have to give a few items the uh, shake test before we pass judgment, and have noticed that one cycle on the normal setting is enough the vast majority of the time. If we're doing a load of something like towels, we may have to run it on max or extended modes, but the bottom line, this perceived negative is real, but it's more about expectations and recalibrating yourself than anything else. But the second negative is one that can't be recalibrated, but has nothing to do with the heat pump technology. This Mila is tiny, like really tiny. The drum capacity of this unit is 4.02 cubic feet, which I think is about 0.11 cubic meters. I'm sure everyone in Europe is laughing at the fact that one, I'm using cubic feet, two, I'm not air drying my clothes, and three, I think this is small. And point one, I'm American. And point two, air drying isn't always a great option, so I'm gonna put that to the side. Go ahead and argue in the comments about that. As for three, the size, I'm American. This Mila is pretty typical for Europe from what I understand, but here in the US, we like everything big and dryers are no different. Typically, you're going to see something about seven to eight cubic feet, so twice the capacity of this Mila. If you're a family of four or five, this size of dryer is going to be challenging for you to say the least. For my wife and I, it's just fine. But again, it took some getting used to. So depending on how much laundry you're running through for your family every week, this size of this specific dryer may be a deal breaker. Now that actually leads me to one of the questions I brought up in the beginning. If heat pump dryers are so ingenious, why aren't we seeing them everywhere? I think part of the answer to that question is cultural. There hasn't been a big desire for crazy efficient dryers here in the US until now. With electricity prices rising, that desire is shifting. If you're like me and trying to produce as much energy as you can over the course of a year with solar power, you're keenly aware of obtaining energy efficient appliances to help with that goal. And if you wanna avoid exhausting conditioned air outside your house, a ventless dryer is super appealing. Now there are a bunch of heat pump dryers hitting the market right now from different manufacturers, and some of those are much larger than this Mila. LG has one roughly the same size as mine, but they also have something that they call the wash tower. It's a stacked washer dryer combo that has a 7.2 cubic foot dryer capacity. Now the heat pump technology works pretty much in the same way as my Mila, but it does require a 240 volt outlet. Now GE also came out with a single combo unit in their profile line that is crazy cool, or hot. It has a 4.8 cubic foot capacity, but what sets this apart is that it washes and dries in the same drum. I know single drum combo units like this have existed for some time, but I'm not aware of any heat pump models like this one. But the best part is that it also runs off of a standard 15 amp household outlet, just like the Mila. Because everything is in one drum, you could set this up on a timer to run overnight and wake up in the morning with fresh, dry clothes. 
If you live in an area with time of use rates for your electricity, you could probably save some money by running it overnight. I absolutely love that. Now, one last thing on the point of why standard household outlets are so important. It opens up a lot of flexibility for where you put your washers or dryers. For my Miele dryer, I can put it anywhere because it doesn't require a vent and wouldn't require an electrician to install a new outlet. If we found that one dryer wasn't enough, we could easily put another unit somewhere like our bedroom closet, no extra wiring or ductwork needed. Finally, the ultimate question I'm sure that's on everybody's mind, what's the cost? Well, Miele is kind of a premium brand, so it has a high price tag regardless of the underlying technology. This model costs $1,799, which is very pricey. Again, some of that comes down to the brand and build quality, and this unit also has some smart home tech so I can see how much time is left on a cycle on my phone and get notifications when it's done. I've actually linked mine into my brother's smart home so a light in the kitchen goes green when a load is done. There's also an announcement that's played on our home pods. The clothes dryer is done. Is it necessary? No, but it's really handy to keep the laundry moving. Now for comparison, the LG heat pump dryer I mentioned earlier costs around $1,100. The GE combo unit retails for about $2,900, but again, that's also including a washing machine as part of that. And the LG Stacked Combo, which also has a washing machine, retails for about $2,300. Now for comparison, one of the better selling dryer models out there, that Samsung that I mentioned earlier, retails for between $700 and $900. You can also find very affordable, not energy efficient electric dryers for five to 600 bucks. But is it worth the price premium for a heat pump model? It depends on your goals. If you're just trying to save money, then it depends on the electricity costs in your area. This Miele and other heat pump dryers like it are around 133 kilowatt hours a year versus something in the 600 kilowatt hour range. As I mentioned, in my area, that could mean about $140 a year in savings. Now comparing the Samsung to the LG model that costs about 1100 bucks, that would take about three years for the cost to equalize. The Miele would take about eight years to equalize. So there's definitely an upfront price hit that you're gonna take going this way, but the standard electric dryer we used at my old house was 17 years old and still going strong. I'm expecting this Miele to do the same exact thing, which means a price savings that are significant over a long time span. But the part that's hard to equate in this is how much energy is lost from vented dryers, just from energy lost through the vent. At the end of the day, my wife and I are very happy with the Miele dryer. It's got some quirks that takes some getting used to, but for the two of us, it's working size-wise and energy-wise. But if you have a large family and need more capacity, I'd look elsewhere at something like the combo units from LG or GE. Regardless of the brand, make, or model, the genius engineering of heat pumps into appliances like this really seems like the future of all dryers. And it's why it's one of the, my favorite new pieces of home tech in my house. So what's your favorite piece of tech that you've added to your home? Jump in the comments and let me know. And be sure to check out my follow-up podcast, Still To Be Determined, where we'll be discussing some of your feedback. And thanks to all my patrons who get ad-free versions of every single video. Your support really helps us to keep delivering you these kind of videos every single week. If you'd like to support the channel and get in on early videos, check out the link in the description. I'll see you in the next one.